yo, yo, boys and girls, it's your boy, Doeste, back with another match day vlog, back in sunny old South and not, it's absolutely pissing it down, I've just arrived, it's now two o'clock, so we got commentary up today, the Sky Blues, High Flyers in League One, so let's have a little chat before we get into the game today. So as things stand today, before this game has even begun, Southend still down the bottom, 20 seconds, still 13-odd points from safety. Coventry South in third place, tremendous form recently, keep winning, haven't lost in quite a few. Been told by a few of their fans on Instagram, thank you, I will not mention names just in case. But thank you for all your messages, but no, the... They are a team we should be looking out for. They're very good on the counter-attacks, I've been told. Down the wings, their defence is quite strong. They're, they've also found that they shouldn't underestimate us today, but I reckon, yeah, whilst you try to remain confident for Southend's point of view, it's going to be a very tough game against a high-flying Coventry. So going into the South End lineup, I want today. We're going to start with Oxley in goal. That's if his back injury isn't too severe, or it'll be young Callum Taylor taking in the net. Then for the defence-wise, which is usually the four at the back, I'd usually go with you know it's a bit difficult because Elvis is playing at centre back role more recently. So you have him and Diang in the middle, Clifford on the left. But who do you put on the right? That's what I'm thinking. Like, do you put Dimitri there maybe, or does he stay in midfield? It's a bit of a, a toss-up. You could argue who you should put there. But going into midfield. You know, I when we played against Lincoln, we played almost like a 4-1-4-1 formation. It worked perfectly. I put Milligan in as that CDM, that central holder, even though he's not settled well with the fans. And, yeah, he gave away a few sloppy things against Peterborough. I still think he, he can still see out the rest of the season, maybe pick it up a little bit towards the end if he really wants us to stay up and care for the team and he has a coaching role in the next few years. Then into the four in the actual middle, put McLaughlin on the right. Two centres, I put Mantum. I would say Harry Phillips, but unfortunately he is still injured, out of action, which is sad to see. So it could either be Hutchinson, it could be Mantum, could be, I don't know, anyone really. Could push Milligan up there. But I'll leave that down in the comments. What would your midfield be? I'd put Mantum and Hutchinson to start. And then over on the left, I'd have Barrett, perhaps. Even though he looked a bit tired, a bit exhausted recently, I'd still have him out there. And then for the one up top, it would have to be Kelman. Just for the fact that he's our top goal scorer so far. He's young. He's going to chase the ball. He's hungry for it. Don't know what's happening with Humphreys. He says he's going to need no surgery. But it says he'll only be out for a couple of weeks. So... You, you don't know, really. This squad's a bit shaky at the minute. It's going to use a lot of youth. Apparently, we've signed two players in Theo Vassal and Emmanuel Osabelli. I think that's how you pronounce it. But that's not actually gone through. So, great job, Ron Martin. Well done. And if anyone hasn't realised, or for a South End's fan point of view, that Ron Martin didn't, did release a statement saying about the club, about how the ground's going, how signings are going, and what's going on with January and signings. To be honest, I think it's a load of bollocks, to be honest. Like... We've postponed this stadium now for near enough 12, 13 years maybe. I know it's definitely 10. I think it's a bit more than that. Signings-wise, everyone's saying we're under an embargo, and I completely agree now. We've signed no one. We failed to play our, pay our players last month, so I can only imagine we've had a transfer embargo and can't sign anyone for like until summer or maybe next January. I generally do not know. So hopefully we can somehow survive in this league, keep hold of a good share of funds... And just hopefully, yeah, go on to next season and hopefully build on it. I can see us trying to stay up, but I don't think so. But all hope is not lost. I know this is very confusing. I'm very tired today. So now I'm going to go get into it, boys, in the wet, rainy weather. Come on, you blues. Also, boys and girls, if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. If you haven't, I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to wait for five seconds. See if you haven't done it. Yeah, we're going to stop this video right here, boys. Come on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay, I believe you've done it now. Right, let's get into this today, boys. team's just been announced and um, it's quite an interesting one to be fair definitely some differences to me but still some similar so i'm going to try and remember as many of them as i can right now so let's list them off oxley elvis kelman barrett dieng milligan eggbury mitchell nelson i think i said elvis i can't remember the good ship 
and there's two more I've forgotten. But either way, it seems like a 4-4-2 on Sam Barrett's the other one, I think, that I missed. But no, it's a 4-4-2, which looks confident. We've got two up front in Goodship and Kelman. Goodship is finally starting. I always thought Sol Campbell had something against him. He's always been on the bench, not picked up top. It's either been the youngsters or Kelman or just someone different, not Goodship. Once again, boys and girls, brilliant turnout from the away squad. We had this week commentary, you know, to bring nearly 2,000 fans down to Essex on what is a stormy weekend from up near Birmingham, Coventry Way, all the way down to Essex. It's impressive. Just going to show you it now. I'm really chuffed to see that way and fall for the first time in a long time. The game's just kicked off here, boys and girls. It's almost we're using a 4 2 3 1 with Milligan and Manton sat just behind. So I think this could work quite well on the attack, but their uh, goalkeeper's just collecting it. Attacking half for himself and got to say more commentary on the break coming forward. But no, our blue, the blues crossbar and post keeping us in this just about for just for this half. But no, great free kick from Conchie that hit the opposite side of the bar. We also did have a nice free kick from Sandbag, just went over that dipped a bit more, that would have been perfect. We, we went in with the win this half, maybe hoping to get an early goal to make Coventry nervous and all that, but I don't think it really worked. They seem to stay what the bat. A few sloppy mistakes for them, which we should have pounced on maybe, but you know, confidence isn't there with the team at the minute after the 4 0 defeat the other fortune last week. So going into the second half with the wind coming at us now and having to defend from Coventry, then they do have a lot of players on the bench that could be game changers for them. So 
it's a bit worrying going to the second half no we haven't had as many shots the possession's been all right on the attack we've been okay Egbury and Barrett on the wings struggling against their full backs or their centre backs Egbury obviously with the height difference is always going to struggle but he's trying very hard and he has got in a few times behind the defence Barrett I don't know he's not really challenging for the ball I don't know if it's just we've been told to lay off on their attack so we have more cover but I don't know it just seems like yeah we're just holding off them so maybe going to say I'll keep the same team out there for a bit then maybe bring on maybe bringing back if we start winning somehow get Kripiani back on maybe bring Rosh on instead of Kelman because Kelman's been playing a lot his last two games and he might need a rest after all of this still remain optimistic though everyone still got my score prediction of 2-1 I reckon Coventry will come out and get a goal and we can turn the game on its head straight away so open for that but anyway more from the second half come on you blues He's not even booked him and he's gone through the back of it. He's gone through the back and not even booked. What is this game? Mitchell Nelson won't let an Oxley come out to get the ball holding out for him. He doesn't come. Mitchell Nelson thinks he's there. He's not. 
Polish strike has just gone round him, put it in the net. Brilliant. This is the atmosphere around here has just made a turn for the worse. I'm about to bring on Hutchinson for Barrett, which I just don't understand. But like, what is going on around there anymore? corrupted for the last 10 minutes of the game yeah hi that might be my fault so basically my phone was on low charge and i did record all of them and then when my phone died just after the game as i'd had done an outro they all came back as corrupted the audio was messed up so unfortunately i will have to cut the video from here just i'm sorry about it not much happened in the last 10 minutes it was a few Balls played around the midfield, up the pitch. No real shots or really anything. But just to wrap it up quickly, saying that I'm sorry about the video crashing. But as for the game today, I'd give my man of the match to Clifford, as he played superbly well. I'm fortunate about Oxley having to come off, but I feel like Callum Taylor can now thrive, as have all the rest of our young players. But no, boys and girls, I'm really sorry, but I will have to cut the video here. Please keep coming back and watching. This is only a one-time error thing. Probably won't happen again. But I've been diversity, and guess what? Peace.